Open forum on the regional internet registries communities. Without this time, we would not do a, a forum on the organizations themselves. That's boring. We sort of know them. Uh, it might be a little bit more to the point to talk about the communities and what have they been doing and how they work. My name is Axel Pavlik. I'm the managing director of the RIPE NCC, uh, which is the area for Europe and rounding areas. Um, I'm standing here in my role as the chair of the number resource organization, which is basically all the RERs working together, doing things together like this. Um, in the interest of efficiency of time, I would ask my panelists to just go around and introduce them shortly and just do their talk. And I would like to start with Aaron because you're slightly fidgety there. Thank you. Is this on? Good afternoon. Now you're awake. Uh, so first, I'd like to take a, a moment to briefly introduce the Internet Registry System as a whole. The Internet Registry System is comprised of the five regional Internet registries. Uh, that is LACNIC for Latin America, ARIN for the America, North America's region, RIPE for the European region, APNIC for Asia Pacific, and AFRINIC for the African region. Uh, together with the five RIRs and IANA, we make the Internet Registry System as a whole, a single Internet Registry System. Uh, each of the registry systems were, uh, were designed to support local language, uh, local time zones, local support, and local regional development of policies. There are some global policies. Uh, they are in, intended to uh, tell IANA how to distribute number resources, that is IPv4 and IPv6, as well as autonomous system numbers to each of the five regional internet registry systems. And those global policies are uh, facilitated by a voluntary use of ICANN uh, to use the ASO to take the exact same text around to each of the five regions and have a regional discussion about global policy. So by the time a global policy passes, uh, a, a policy has been presented and discussed and, and come to consensus at dozens of meetings. Outside of global policy, uh, there's regional policy. Uh, and each of us are going to talk about the policy development process in their respective regions. Uh, I'm Aaron Hughes. I am uh, one of the seven board members of the American Registry of Internet Numbers, or, or Aaron. Uh, our region consists of 24 countries, that is Canada, the United States, and 22 of the 27 Caribbean islands. Those are primarily chosen for, uh, for, for local language. Uh, the other five are handled by LACNIC. In the Aran region, uh, there are uh, seven board members, six of which are elected, and the seventh is the CEO, along with 15 advisory council members, all of which are elected, and they are there to facilitate the policy development process with the community. They help uh, author, shepherd, work with community members to get text together to present at, at within the region, uh, and, um, and will even bring up policies at time, recommend policies to the community that they work with. Uh, in the Aaron region, we have uh, two annual meetings, uh, along with occasionally what we call a PPC, which is a consultancy meetings uh, within the operator community, where we take input, uh, as well as uh, an Aaron on the road program, where we uh, send out small teams of people to regions that might not otherwise be able to attend Aaron meetings to get community input. Uh, the policy development process is entirely open. You can participate on mailing lists or remotely attending meetings, as well as in person at our uh, regular meetings. Uh, the next Aaron meeting will be held in Jamaica on April 17th, and I certainly welcome you to participate in that either in person or remotely. And there's also a, a program available through Aaron that will help uh, facilitate getting you to a meeting to participate uh, where you're welcome to, uh, to request um, uh, assistance in, in getting to uh, the meeting and attending in person. And you're welcome to ask me any questions about the Aaron meeting. And I'm going to pass to my colleagues for the rest of the regional. Thank you very much.
Aaron. Okay, so next in line is Nicolas. Will you introduce yourself quickly? Thank you. Okay. Um, morning, everyone. Um, well, my, my name is Nicolas. I'm from Uruguay, and I've been involved since a couple of years now uh, in the policy development process and in the community in general in within the, the LACNIC the LACNIC region. Actually the, the LACNIC region involves all the countries that are between the frontier of Mexico and the US, including Mexico, down up to the including all the Caribbean countries, down to the south end of Argentina, I mean all Latin America and the Caribbean island. And what do we do regarding in uh, policy development in the region? Well, there, there's a, the, the, the policy development process is kind of lead, it's led by the, the community itself. There's a, a, a PDP, which it's the, actually the, the policy development process, that it's a, a kind of document that has a part when it says all the administrative uh, things and, 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 and tasks on how to develop policies, how to present a new policy, how they are discussed, how they are elected or in favor or against, and how they are deployed. And then is the, there's the policy manual, which is a compendium of all the, the policies that are actually uh, running in the, in the region. Who is able to participate in this development process? And that's one of the main things about this, this, this process. There's no a group in charge of developing, a uh, special group in charge of, develop, of developing policies. Uh, actually, no, in, in, in all five regions, there's no such group. The group is the whole community. I mean, it's not uh, the, the members of the RIR, it's not, it's anyone, anyone. Actually, the only thing you need are two things you need to, to, to participate in, 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 that, in that developing process, which are you, ha you have to have the desire to participate, that's one. And the second one is that you have to go to the RIR page, look for the policy page, just click on the, on the certain link that will lead you to the to a mailing list which is the main uh, the main field which policies are presented proposed and discussed and that's all that's all desire and a subscription to a mailing list you can be anyone no matter what you do who you are you can propose a new policy you can discuss any policy you can then vote against or in favor, or argue against, or argue in favor of any policy. There are two kinds of, of policies we discuss. Normally, we discuss the ones that are uh, we call regional policies within the, the specific region, and there are other kinds of policies which are global. Um, I'm going to uh, mention an example of a global policy. Could be the the, the one that or the ones that were developed regarding the accession of IPv4 space, how the IANA, for example, will uh, give new addresses that were, uh, I don't know how to say it in, 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 in English, I, 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 I can't find the exact word, but when, when you have IPv4 space that you don't know, no longer need, you return it to the IANA, and then the IANA, with this space, returned space, will give some blocks to the, to the five different regions. That, that There's a global policy that was developed a couple of years ago, which actually tells the IANA how to manage that, that blocks that were you know, given back to, to the IANA. 
that was a policy which is the, the processes are some have some differences the process which are local and the processes which are uh, global mainly the the, the 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 challenge with the global process is that you have to be in coordination with all five reels because the policy has to be approved in all five reels first so as then goes to the IANA and it's then may, might be approved with for the by the IANA and the, the actual the, the actual policy was developed from the community of the five regions and then was approved by the by the IANA and, and it's the policy that are, they are applying at this time so um, regarding regional policy development, there are lots of, of, of things that, are, that were discussed in the past and that are being discussed. Uh, all the, the criteria for assigning IPv4 blocks were discussed and are a consequence of policies developed by the community. All the criteria for the new IPv6 methods of assigning blocks are a consequence of policies being deployed or and, and proposed by the community. And also there are a lot of, lot, of poli lot of work regarding administrative policies, how the, this process works if they have to be changed from time to time because of, of you know, if things need to be done different, you have to propose a policy which is also proposed by the community to change the process of developing, of policy development. That's also part of the, of the PDP, of the policy development process, not part of the policy manual. And okay, I will stop here and if you have any question then. Thank you very much. Um, I think we'll do a round of questions towards the end. Um, so you said that uh, anybody is a member of the community, anybody can come off the streets and pa participate in the, in the discussion. That is interesting. Um, Saskia, who are you? That's a good question. <laughs> My name is Saskia kleine Tebe. I work for the German federal government, precisely in the ministry, uh, Federal Ministry of the Interior. And uh, what I would like to talk to you about is that we, as a government, uh, had some difficulties in assuming a role of, of uh, being just a part of a community. And, um, but still, um, I'm s we are still alive and the world is uh, still turning, so it was not the end of the world. And I would like to tell you how our experience with working with them, precisely with the RIPE NCC, because Germany is in Europe, has turned out. Yeah, um, so how and why we as a government are part of that uh, community? How do we interact with RIPE NCC? You should bear in mind that uh, the German Federal Ministry of the Interior is one of the most conservative and traditional ministries we have in our government. It has been there forever. And it was, it was kind of new for us to work together to cooperate with a non-for-profit organization based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands where basically, as uh, Nicholas described, everyone could participate and uh, engage in discussions. That's not the way governments or ministries work. So um, this famous multi-stakeholder way is not no normal to us in, in the government, so we had to we had to adjust a bit to the, the way how, how the internet is governed. Usually we would say we are the government, we govern everything, including the internet, but no, internet is ruled any, uh, in a different way. You, you all know that. Although the two words governance and government sound quite alike, it's a whole different thing. So we had to learn that we have to play by the internet governance rules where if we want to have our say and if we want to put forward our interests. So, um, as a matter of fact, we have to do that because we are operating a local um, internet registry and thus we received uh, IPv6 address space from RIPE NCC. So when we receive something, we have to give something in return. Uh, and there's a need, of course, because uh, we as a government also have to prepare for future internet usage, uh, also at government level where I need to build up a structured and homogeneous infrastructure 
and we have to follow a coordinated approach and have to take care of all security aspects. In the Ministry of the Interior, it's all about security, of course. So um, in order to do so, we, we just had no choice but to accept our role in this community. And our role in that community is being an equal part with everyone else. We are not someone special just because we are a government. And, uh, and when doing so, we figured out that we could learn so much from the other community members. So thank you to all of you, because uh, we, we were quite new to that, uh, to that community. And uh, it worked well. It really turned out fine. We had to set up our local internet registry, de.government. We didn't know how to do that, but we learned. <coughs> and um, now we are part of the community. We follow the complete same multi-stakeholder approach, uh, like everyone else who is part of that community. So, well, as I told you in the beginning, that was scary, because normally if we um, if we want to change something, we do a policy, we work with governments, we work with the parliament. In the end, if we have to, we make a law, that's how we work. But this doesn't, doesn't work for, for internet governance. Uh, so uh, we had to accept the role as part of the community. We started to engage in discussions. We uh, it, it took part in the policy negotiations. And uh, what happened? We were listened. We talked to people. We we could put forward our interests, uh, and the, com the rest of the community happened to listen to us. That was maybe not surprising for the community, for us it was. So um, we had the, the chance to bring up our user perspective. It's b a bit different, of course, of um, usual um, internet service providers or companies, because we're a government after all. We have some special requirements and some different needs. Um, for example, uh, yeah, let's think about an example. Of course, um, maybe our federal criminal office does not want to be published in an internet accessible who is database because that might not work well with the work they have to do. Or another uh, example is sometimes we have, a, we have the police, we have the public prosecutor and the court within the same building. So you could, see, you could say that's just one side. It is not because for constitutional reasons we have to keep the traffic and all the database and all the everything cons concerned with data completely apart uh, between the police and the, the um, judiciary. So there are some. I, I wonder, we'll not get into details. There are some some differences, uh, but uh, at least we were listened. We could we could um, uh, explain how 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 governments work and how our requirements are. Uh, so, uh, and finally, there was um, an agreement that governments or the public administration is a sort of special, a new uh, local internet registry, uh, which is a bit different, but still it's, it works, it works in, in a similar way. Uh, but because we have different needs, there, there might be also a need for policy adaptations. And in order to do that, we just had to engage in the discussions, we did so. Uh, of course, the group of uh, stakeholders got a big, bit bigger by bringing in all the public administration, but, uh, well, that's how it is. And you know what? In the end, uh, working with these guys pays off because in, um, in, the, in the short end, we, together with the United Kingdom and uh, also with Switzerland, we managed to change a policy. Uh, to be precise, the policy of RIPE 641, RIPE NCC EP, IPv6 address allocation and assignment to RIPE 655. And now our new needs are taken into account. So I, I said that a number of times, so what I would like to tell you in a nutshell is that uh, governments do not govern the internet. The internet is governed by the community. But governments are part of that community and when they start acting as a member of that community, it's not the end of the world, but uh, it's the only way to put forward government interests within that world. That's what I wanted to uh, tell you. Thank you very much. Wonderful, Saskia. Thank you very much. Um, as you say, it was a bit of a surprise for you that it worked. Um, I can say it was not a surprise for us, but it was great to see you participating as a government in the, in the PDP and, and getting the results that, that you wanted and the community just playing along with it. It was wonderful. Mike, you're up next. Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? 
It's been a long week. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Blanche. I'm from Google, based in London. Uh, we're a member of RIPE, as well as some of the other RIRs, as we have operations around the world. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about RIPE from the perspective of, of being a member, such as uh, Google is a member of RIPE. Um, First of all, obviously, management of the IP resources is, is a critical part of the, the technical and the operational part of the, of the internet. And RIPE, which has responsibility for a, a very large region, actually, ranging from, I think, Greenland in the, in the west through to the far east of Russia, like Vladivostok. And then if you go from top to bottom, it's like Iceland down to Yemen, I think. There we go. I know my ge geography just about. Um, so it's a, it's a very large area. and, and, and uh, uh, many hundreds of millions of people that, that rely on RIPE um, operating efficiently and effectively for the, for the internet to work well. Uh, RIPE is obviously a community bottom-up organization, multi-stakeholder, as you've heard from other people. Um, RIPE's been around since 1989, I think, and the organization was founded a couple of years later, I think, probably. In 92. There we go. So since the fall of the Berlin Wall, um, which was quite a long time ago, um, and the RIPE community, as you've heard from other speakers, comes together in many ways, both physically and virtually, um, on mailing lists at the, uh, at the main RIPE meetings that, that happen uh, two or three times a year. Um, and also there's regional meetings, which takes the, the, the RIPE organization out to every corner of that large geographical area. Um, through RIPE, um, the policy that Saskia was talking about, the rules about how RIPE operates and how it, uh, how it allocates its resources and how the organization operates, that is debated and agreed between all the, all the stakeholders and all the, all the participants um, involved in, uh, in the RIPE organization. Um, this policy development happens in both formal and informal uh, kind of uh, sessions. Um, at RIPE meetings, there's, there's formal policy development sessions, and then also you can talk, talk to anyone you want over beer or coffee. Everyone is equal. Everything is open. Uh, the mic is always open, remote participation is encouraged, and you don't even have to be a RIPE member to attend a RIPE meeting. Any, anyone can come. Uh, we have participants and presentations from, from educational sector, from the commercial sector, from civil society, from governments, uh, individuals, and there's, there's this open dialogue and discussion. And more broadly than just policy development, um, the RIPE me meetings facilitate sharing of broad best practices, network management practices, information is exchanged between all the, all the participants and members of the community. And I think RIPE and the RIRs in general are a great example of, of the multi-stakeholder system at work. But I think they also play an important broader role in helping to bring together a coherent and kind of inclusive community um, dedicated to building and developing the internet. So I just leave you with one, one encouragement to, to participate in your regional internet registry to post on mailing lists, lists, to attend meetings, to ensure that these organizations continue to be well governed, governed and well run for the benefit of both their members and the broader internet stakeholders and internet community, and to help shape these organizations in ways that benefits the internet. And just one final, one final thought, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the community getting to know each other and building trust and ideas in, in both formal and informal settings. And uh, thanks to the generosity of uh, sponsors, RIPE has great parties as well. So uh, I'll leave you with that. <laughs> and there's that. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so you talked about um, <coughs> how we sort of govern ourselves, how it's all bottom up and, and self uh, regulation. Wonderful. I believe Lito will take us into the slightly bigger sphere of, of internet uh, governance at large. Lito, who are you again? Okay. Yes, I'm Lito Ibarra. I am from El Salvador in Central America, and I'm a member of the LACNIC board for six years now. Um, we've been uh, dealing and uh, uh, conducting these open meetings and policy development, um, at the, um, receiving co the, the community, the Latin American community, in our, mainly in our two yearly meetings, but also through mailing lists and other types of uh, involvement. I want to refer briefly to a specific type of uh, community involvement uh, that com started in March last year with the NTII announcement, that is the IANA transition. In LACNIC, 
we started to to see this um, transition and the, the we had to to state a position bottom up process so we designed a uh, a whole process a time timeline and a work plan that started around august last year uh, we started with uh, some uh, uh, online consultations previous to 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 engage in or developing documents or ideas more formally and then we start um, uh, we, we um, assemble a small coordinating meeting of three people from the community I was I had the honor to be one of these three uh, persons that conducted the, the first consultation public consultations and uh, and we did that we, we started uh, by looking at, at the other RIRs, what are, were they doing at that time? That is a, uh, a characteristic, characteristic I like very much about this community. We uh, always look at each other, one of the, to, to the other five, uh, I mean to the other four uh, RIRs uh, in, in the world. So we, as the global policies, we tend to, to look what are the others doing so we can take example or uh, ideas and probably improve them. So that is what we did with this process. We, we assembled the, this small team. We started with the mailing list, a specific mailing list for this purpose to gather ideas and uh, opinions about the IANA transition so we can have uh, a model or, or uh, uh, something that we can discuss with the other RI RIRs to finally come up with a integrated proposition to to the ICG uh, that was going to receive this uh, proposition for the from the numbers community. So we did that in uh, uh, following the process in October last year, 28. We had a, a within our uh, normal regular second meeting of the year, uh, which includes the operators uh, of the region, we had this special session uh, to, uh, to conduct this um, uh, public consultation face to face. And, and uh, we started with the proposition that APNIC has already on the table that comprises uh, four uh, 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 items like the SLA, or the renegotiation of the commitment of uh, uh, the, the, the the commitment of uh, I mean the affirmation of commitment uh, with ICANN. Those were parts of the propositions uh, that was being developed at that time. So we had this as a base. But since in LACNIC we have had a fiscal commission that is an uh, auditing body that uh, it's in our bylaws. We have this body com uh, composed of three uh, members of the community uh, elected by the community that they have the, the duty to, to observe, to uh, follow, to request anything that uh, both the financial um, operations and the, uh, the bylaws uh, uh, compliment and, 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 and uh, all of these things. Since we had this in place, we added to the APNIC uh, proposal something that we call at that time the MONC. That was the Multi-Stakeholder Oversight Numbers Council. Our idea, idea uh, coming from the community was that uh, this special body com uh, composed of, uh, I I in, our, in theory, it will be composed from uh, members of the community of the five RIRs and I, its duty will be to oversight the operation, the IANA and uh, RIR's relationship uh, and, and, and state whatever they could find that could be improved or had to be uh, or, or was wrongly done or whatever. So that was where our idea, our idea, and we came with this uh, final proposal to the uh, around 15th of November to our board uh, board 
We approved that, and it went to the to the other IRRs, uh, and and the crisp uh, body that we assembled that. Uh, we sent our representatives to that body to the crisp, and they discuss this. And uh, I w I will dare to say that uh, the monk turned into the review committee or something like that. It is uh, the, the current review committee that is uh, in the in the transition proposal. And, uh, and and we're we're working in that. Afterwards, the SLA was also worked and reviewed, and uh, we we were uh, finalizing this whole job. I mean, the the whole numbers community in a bottom-up process, in an open process. We had like like the, uh, uh, they have said in the in the right region. They we have also people from fr coming to our meetings, they are completely open, uh, online participation, and we have people from the governments, from uh, civil society, academia, etc., private sector, of course. Uh, uh, we have them in our meetings, so everybody uh, was uh, voicing their opinions about this proposal. So we're now in the phase that, as you all know, we're waiting for the for the completion of the, the proposal uh, from the mostly the accountability issue, the ac ICANN accountability, but our job is, is done uh, in that regards. We're waiting for the, the final acceptance and so on to start working in the implementation of our own uh, proposal. We're in LACNIC, we're about to, to enter the process of selecting the members of our of uh, the review committee from our region, so uh, we're, we're we're working on that. Uh, so I think I'd, that's I wanted to tell. So thank you, Dino. Thank you very much. So you described basically what the how the challenge to the communities was met to create something completely new, something completely different. I mean, we were doing policies for 20 years, more than 20 years. It's all it's all lovely, but then this IANA transition thing was something completely different. And how do we set up a process that we can define that? And you mentioned a proposal. So now I go on to, to Izumi. I, I think I've seen you before, too. Um, how did that proposal come together? If you, if you can describe it in like five minutes. <laughs> yes, uh, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Izumi Okutani and um, I'm from a national internet registry in Japan called JPNIC and uh, so I'm a member of the um, APNIC community member um, um, in terms of RIR regions and I'm also um, the chair of a team of um, com uh, number community representatives called the CRISP team. So I think this um, homework that we were given by the NTIA was very interesting um, exercise and example of how we have actually addressed the um, um, a global uh, policy question that we needed to come up with a concrete answer, where uh, which is a little bit outside of our regular process. But uh, as Lito has described, the first thing that we did was we made use of the existing um, community and the forums that uh, uh, we have. So I think Lito has uh, really um, comprehensively described the situation in LACNIC. But each of these R RIR regions have actually gone through their parallel process. And this has actually accommodated that um, people were able to um, communicate in, in their local situation and felt more comfortable rather than going directly into the global discussions. But uh, of course, we needed to submit a single uh, global proposal um, to the ICG, not the five individual uh, regional proposals. And the challenge that we had was that we had the timeline set. Um, so the RFP was, I think, announced in June or July, and we had to submit a proposal in, um, in January, mid-January, 15th of January, 2015. Um, so we, that's why the team called the CRISP team uh, was set up uh, with uh, three representatives each from five RIR regions composed of um, 
50 members each. And I'm actually proud that um, we, we actually have this structure um, with equal regional representation because compared to the other two functions of this uh, IANA that you know, they had to do the similar work for the names and the protocols, I think there has been some observations that has been made throughout this week that some region is more vocal than the other. But we were able to balance this out very well um, by having this um, structure. And um, so, and, but I do want to emphasize that the role of the CRISP team was not to develop the uh, proposal from scratch, but to respect what has been discussed already um, in each of these regions. So our name, the CRISP, actually stands for Consolidated RIR IANA Stewardship Proposal Team. I can't remember, I have to we, read it, but the, 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 the key is to consolidate it. We, we actually, you know, you know, worked on how we can uh, consolidate the, the differences between the uh, proposal. So I think at the beginning, uh, Lacknick was, uh, was proposal uh, of the monk was actually not proposed in other regions. So we had to discuss how we would incorporate that idea, whether um, other regions would be comfortable with accommodating that. Um, there has also been an idea of exchanging an AOC between RIRs and ICANN. Um, but this, I, I, after considering the requirements, felt that the SLA would be sufficient. So these were the kind of coordination work that was um, needed. And um, yeah, I, I would say we, we worked very pragmatically and efficiently. Um, so the first meeting of the CRISP team to start the work, start, I, th I think it was on 19th of December. And then we've submitted the proposal in time on the 15th of January. So we did it uh, less in less than a month. And it was uh, pretty impressive to see the, the commitments and contributions by each of the CRISP team members. Um, and I, I think this uh, process is an excellent example of how we were we actually accommodate the diversities of the five regions, but can work together collaboratively to um, establish when we were given a specific task uh, as a numbers community. And I also find this experience in the CRISP not just brought me very close to other colleagues within the RIR regions, which I wasn't, I, I may have known the names and faces, but you know, I got to know them very, you know, much, much better. But we also had an, an opportunity to interact better with the names and the protocol parameters. So this is really an example of how, when we were given a task and how we would collaborate with different communities, and it's just like a, a concrete product of this multi-stakeholder process. So this was a very good um, and encouraging experience. So it was. Thank you very much, Izumi. Alia, who are you and what are you going to tell us? Okay, I'm Janvier Noulay, lecturer uh, in ICT at uh, the University of uh, Yaoundé in Cameroon. I'm a former uh, Afrinic board member, uh, one, of, one of the CRIST team members uh, for our region. Uh, I come with um, uh, two questions. Uh, so uh, my, 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 my purpose is to answer uh, to these two questions. So what are communities involve, involvement in internet development in, into our region and how IP addresses are progressing? Uh, so what are communities involvement in uh, internet development? Uh, how, uh, I have to, to start by how the first community was born. Uh, we can say that um, the first community, our first community, everything started on, in 1997 uh, when the story community uh, was set up to work uh, on a phrenic structure and business plan. And then uh, we have other uh, dates, 2000, uh, 2001, 2004, uh, the 2004, the Afrenic was registered in uh, Mauritius. And 2005, uh, Afrenic, uh, Afrenic accredited uh, uh, ICANN accredited Afrenic as the fifth regional uh, internet registry. 
uh, and up to now, uh, up to now, uh, Afrenic provides provides services uh, to ISP and end user within within uh, its six regional uh, uh, geographical region, namely uh, Northern uh, African, Western African, Central African. Uh, Southern Africa, uh, Eastern Africa, and uh, Indian, uh, Indian, uh, uh, Indian Ocean. So, uh, okay, adding to to Africanic for numbers, uh, various organizations are emerging and constitute the African Internet ecosystem. Uh, we can count Africa Set for security, uh, Afrain for research and education, um, uh, Af uh, AFPIC for infrastructure and uh, internet exchange point, um, AFTLD for country uh, top level domain name, AFNOC for tech capacity building, and uh, IES for uh, or Africa Internet Summit, uh, which uh, interconnect all the IF star and the communities involved uh, in internet development uh, in Africa are all those uh, IF star. And the next, we can say that the next uh, Africa Internet Summit will be t take place uh, in uh, in uh, Botswana. Uh, it will be uh, uh, next year. Um, Uh, how now, the next question is uh, how uh, IP addresses are progressing uh, in our region. Uh, yes, uh, how IP addresses are progressing in our region. Uh, let's say that uh, uh, we have about uh, 12 million, 12 million Okay, 12 million of uh, IP addresses issued in 2004. 2.7/8 uh, 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 available in our IPv4 pool, uh, end of uh, 2014, and we are serving for about more than uh, 1,000 organizations uh, in 2004, uh, and 400, more than 400 members with uh, IPv6 uh, prefix with 36% of membership ratio, but uh, only 15% visibility in 2004. Uh, IPv6 uh, prefix allocated to 40, uh, 49th of uh, uh, 53 African countries. And uh, we can also add that training up to now, about uh, 4,000 uh, engineers attended uh, a workshop conducted in uh, 41 countries. Uh, there we have uh, a membership trend, uh, how the membership trend uh, is growing. Uh, we have uh, 1,000, uh, more than 1,000 active members at, uh, as uh, uh, of year ending 2014. Uh, yeah, we, this this show how uh, the, the, the increasing of consumption of uh, uh, IP uh, IP addresses we, uh, is, is increasing. Uh, this table show um, they give some IPv6 address information, uh, so we can uh, say that the total allocated uh, of uh, IPv6 uh, is for about uh, 500. Uh, as uh, is distributed, distributed in uh, the, the sub-region. Uh, about policy, uh, we can say that we have about, we have 21 policies that have been ratified. And um, uh, here we have um, some policies who uh, are still pended uh, as the one, um, two are under discussion out of region use of uh, Africanic internet numbers resources. This one is um, still under discussion. Another one under discussion is the number, number resources transfer policy. And the recent that have been ratified is the one on uh, resources reservation for internet exchange point. And uh, the, 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 another one on ENICAS uh, resources assignment. 
uh, in Africa region. So um, we also work in capacity building, uh, community and global engagement. Uh, by training for government, offer training for government policymaker and manager, uh, African Union uh, engagement with African Union, Africa Telecommunication Union, ITU, uh, etc. Uh, engagement with ICANN and cooperation within uh, NRO. Uh, also engagement with uh, Chris team uh, for ENR transition. So uh, you are uh, invited to our next event at Pointe Noire in Congo, Brazzaville for, for Afrenic 2023. Uh, will be at the end of this month until 4th December. So thank you. Thank you very much. So I, I think we can see quite clearly by your presentation what the establishment of Afrenic also did for the, for the content as, as a focal point for all the various activities that are not necessarily numbers related. There's lots of things going on there and we do see that also in the, in the other RIRs regions a little bit that uh, the, the RIRs might, be, might have been the focal point at one point or still is in, in some cases. So we have a couple of minutes left if there are any questions from the audience. If that is not the case, I shall ask you as a, as a group. What do you think, what would be the, the upcoming challenges or the, the sort of uh, areas of, of work um, for the RIRs, communities as such. What, what do you think would be the thing that beyond the IANA transition maybe uh, that you see as, as interesting and an issue that, that should come up, would come up? I see a hand from Mizumi. Dito? Whoever. So, um, well, I can't quite speak from the RIR perspective, but uh, I would like to speak as a national internet registry in Japan. Um, and um, I'm not saying this because we're in the IGF, but um, sharing what's happening around the internet governance arena and uh, extracting what's relevant for the numbers community or in the wider context. Many of our community members are operators. What's relevant for the operators around the technologies that uses the resources, DNS, um, routing, and then in the wider context of security. Those are the kind of challenges that I'm seeing and how do we actually um, you know, raise awareness about importance of getting involved in these uh, issues. And I, I think uh, this time this year at the IGF, um, the V6 Best Practices Forums that uh, Susan has uh, led uh, was an excellent way of getting, you know, get putting the expertise within the RIRs community into writing and then share that with the, the wider um, governance. Um, uh, arena. So that's what I see as one of the areas that we, we, want, we might want to uh, focus. Thank you. Nito? Yes. <coughs> Besides taking the care of the technical aspects of uh, the numbers and the uh, upcoming, I mean, the process of uh, uh, getting IPv6 deployed and uh, new topics li like as Internet of Things related to IPv6 and stuff like that. Besides that, I think uh, we have the, the, the role or the duty to keep on um, making, uh, creating more awareness about all these uh, Internet governance uh, things. Not as our, our IRs, we, 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 we stand clear we stand clear on our uh, main focus, which is technical, but we certainly are part of the, a large community uh, in our countries, in our regions. So it's, uh, I think it's a, a duty, a challenge to be part of this uh, internet governance uh, processes, uh, to be part of this um, uh, laws, uh, proposal of laws nationally, regionally, uh, and, and we'll work alongside with the other stakeholders uh, that are part of this uh, whole internet governance uh, uh, aspect. So I think that is uh, a challenge that will grow instead of diminish. So Thank you very much. Niklas. 
Thanks. Um, fr from, uh, from the community perspective, I, I also wanted to add that one of the challenges that I believe it, there's always there, it's about participation. I mean, it's the, I, I always believe that the participation has two sides. One is the ability to retain those who are already participating. That, not, that is apparently a, a simple thing, but it's not like that. It's far from being simple to retain the people that are already participating. And the other side, which is the same, with the same importance, is how to engage the new ones in participating. I, I believe that that's one of the, of the challenge that has been always a challenge. We in the Lagnig region always talk about that within the community, in the participation in the policy development process, the participation in the, in the in all the, 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 the process that are that were always running, like the policy one and the new ones like the IANA transition or whatever new process that for sure will arise in the future. That's thank you. Anybody else? Otherwise I would I would pick it up from, from basically what all three of you said. Um, so you are community representatives. I'm maybe the representative of the of the RIRs here. Um, what we are trying to do as well, and I think that is also equally important, is to understand what the community wants and growing the community and, and sustaining it, but also there are lots of operators out there. I'm not an operator myself for more than 20 years. So it's important to understand what our community wants, what our members want, what the operators want from the RIRs. Giving out numbers is one thing, but there are so many more things that, that we are doing and can be doing, so it's important to hear that, and, and then again, part participation within the community and speaking out becomes very important. Do you have any, any more questions in the audience? Yes, please, I have a microphone. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm from uh, Association of Computer Telecom Operators. I'm Rajesh. Uh, my question was, uh, you mentioned about the voluntary surrender of uh, IP address as such. So how successful has, has that been uh, since it's been two years since you launched? Is there any incentive? Because we see a lot of people have taken bulk IP address, and they are not using many of those IP address as such. It's used, uh, left unused for many years, especially uh, big corporates or universities, which are have, you know, the entire bulk of IP address as such. So is there anything? And secondly, uh, like from an Indian example, uh, the Indian government is pushing the customers to actually use an Indian-based IP address. So they're saying, even if you have a global IP, uh, you would be required to take an Indian IP. This is especially true for, a, for a, uh, specific customers like BPOs, call centers, who are required to register with the licensor as such. So is there any effort to kind of, uh, because uh, one shouldn't be centrali localizing the IP. IP is a common pool which can be used uh, if the co company has it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody wants to take that? Nicolas? OK. Um, I kind of forgot the first question. I, I have it in my mind, but it goes. May you? The first question was uh, the effectiveness of uh, reclaiming address space, returning it to ah, okay, Iana. yeah, for sure. Um, without risk, uh, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to risk going into deep technical discussion, but um, IP addresses, IP4 addresses at the beginning were uh, given with a different criteria um, I mean, at the beginning of the IP protocol, we are talking about uh, 30 years ago, <laughs> maybe or more. Um, so there are some big blocks of IPv4 addresses that are uh, retained by some few organizations. That is, that is true. But then that changes. The criteria for assigning IPv4 addresses with the creation of the five RIRs and with all the you know, IANA and, 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 and the system that, that, that ICANN has some, particip some big participation on it has been more, um, more 
I mean, it has been more delicately designed and the criteria for assigning IP addresses that are actually running and working in the whole world, I mean, in the fourth, in the all five years, as for IPv4 or for IPv6, actually are the consequence of policies that came uh, arises from the community. From the community, and, and it's important to, to know, it's very important in this, which is more technical, to know that the, the community, the operators are the community. The operator thinks what they need and what policies has to be developed so they, 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 they get what they need and they propose policies. So I, I, I tend to, send that, to say that the actual criteria are the correct ones. Of course, there's always, always space for improving. That's why the, this process, this policy development process, always is always evolving. So, and as for the second thing, which could be running more technical <laughs> details, uh, I, I I'm not aware of exactly what the those local country IP addresses are. I I I I, I believe I know the, the the background and the and the the argue argument of that though I don't um, share the, the, the arguments, I, I may understand it, but I believe that, I, I would say that you have to be very careful about what you do uh, when you mix uh, a local political decision or a local uh, issue and you want to solve it by stating a global policy. Because protocols and policies exist for a reason and, and work together. And the way they work needs that they are coordinated and they work together. If you, if you try to you know, get into local issues by a global approach like that, um, you may just end up destroying all that takes more than 30 years to build, so it's kind of risky. I will try to look at IPv6 and use IPv6, IPv6 addresses instead of, you know, creating a new uh, address protocol or, or a new address or a new DNS protocol. That's my thought. Thank you very much. So we have neatly run out of time. I think we used up pretty much the, the hour. Um, I think we'll all be around a little little while longer in, in the Zoom, like a couple of minutes. So if there are any, any more questions that we can, can address. Um, I would like to thank you all for your contributions. I think we've seen a very nice summary and, and a wide area of topics from how does the community operate to some, some technical hints there to the political as well. I think we show that there's wide diversity of topics, of people, of regions and needs within the regions across the world. Uh, the IGF is just one of the places we, we like to go and, and participate. I think it's very important that we do that. But again, participation in the areas, uh, communities on a regional level, across regional level, is uh, probably at the heart of all this panel here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. I wish you a lovely Friday and also wish you that you have time for the beach a little bit maybe on the weekend. Cheers. Thank you.